Okay, in this video, I'm going to answer the most asked question in partial fractions, and that's a situation when we have factors in the denominator not being repeated. In those situations, how exactly should we set up for the partial fraction form, right? Why do we have to build out the power? And I will first look at the linear case first, okay? So repeated linear factors, how can we deal with them? So let me show you guys a fraction first. And by fraction, we mean a rational expression, namely a polynomial over polynomial, okay? And let me just give you guys a factor first. Let me put down x plus 2. This is linear because we have x to the first power, but it's not being repeated because we only have this to the first power. If you want to have this being repeated, you just put this with a different power. You can put down 2, you can put down 5, you can put down 10. Any positive whole number besides 1 will make this repeated, okay? And for simplicity purpose, I will first put down just 2. So of course, this means x plus 2 times x plus 2. That means we're being repeated, right? However, if you are doing integration, let's say 1 over x plus 2 squared, you don't have to do any partial fraction business. When we say let's do partial fraction, it's that we have this guy along with something else. So I will give you guys x plus 1 to the first power, like this, okay? If you only have that part, you can integrate 1 over this already. But if you have this, you have to break them apart, okay? And now, this is what you have to pay attention to. You have to look at the degree on the top and also the degree on the bottom. You have to make sure that the degree on the top has to be lower than the degree on the bottom. In our case here, the degree on the bottom is 3. So the degree on the top, it can be 0, namely a constant, or it can be 1, or it can be 2. Okay? Suppose the degree on the top is the same or higher than the degree on the bottom. You have to do long division first. Right? But our focus is the setup for this situation. So let me just put down, let's say, 3x minus 5. For example, the degree on the top is 1, the degree on the bottom is 3. So this is going to work. Right? Now, this is the usual setup. So this is going to be, look at this, we have x plus 1 as a factor. So you know it's going to be something over x plus 1. And because this is just a linear, so the top should be just a constant because you have to make sure the top is one degree less than the bottom, right? So I will just put down the constant, I'll just write down A for that. And next, and this is where the tricky part is. The second factor is the x plus 2 squared right here, right? But you actually have to set up something over x plus 2 to the first power. Why? Because people tell you to do so, right? And because, you know, this is the linear, so on the top, I will have a constant, so I'll put on b. And we're not done, because you actually have to go up to 2, right, for the degree. So I will have to go up and build up the power. And the third one is x plus 2 to the second power. And the top right here, they have to stay the same kind. This is a constant, so this is going to be another constant. So they have to be the same kind, so I will just put on C for that. And this is the most asked question, like why do we have this term? Like why do we have to build out the powers, right? And by building a power, I mean the following. Suppose you have a different power, let me just put down 4, okay, just to emphasize this. We are not done yet, we will have to put down D over X plus 2 to the third power, and then build out the power, right? up to x plus 2 to the fourth power. This is what we mean by put out the power. And if you just remember this kind of setup, yes, it's going to work. And ideally speaking, it's like after you figure all the unknown constants, you can integrate each every fraction and things like that. But where's the fun? Where's the math? If you just memorize the setup. I'm going to explain why we have to build out the powers for you guys. But I will just go back to the second degree right here, okay, for simplicity purpose, okay? And also, let me emphasize this one more time. As long as the top has lower degree than the bottom, the setup will actually be the same. So I can actually have 3x squared minus 5, and the setup will still be the same. I can have 3x squared minus 5x plus 4, the setup will still be the same but the ABC values are going to be different in each situation, okay? And of course, the math will be harder, the algebra will be harder as well. 
But to make this <laughs> really simple, let me just put down one on the top. Hopefully, you guys don't mind. Okay? And the reason I want to do this is because I can relate this with one of my previous videos, okay? With the integral from 0 to 1 ln x times ln of 1 minus x dx. So, yeah. Anyway, here is the deal. In order for me to explain this, let me just take a look right here. What I want to do is, I will just consider the following situation first for you guys. And you see, I have x plus 2 squared, okay? I'm going to call this to be a different variable. I will just use t for it, okay? So let's look at 1 over t squared like that. And because I say t is equal to x plus 2, right, let me just put on t is equal to x plus 2. So that means t minus 1 will be x plus 1, right? Because I subtract 1 on both sides, so I can get the x plus 1. This is not the main part, but here is the interesting part. So hopefully you guys agree that this situation and that situation are similar based on the change of variable, letting t is equal to x plus 2. Now here's the interesting part. We will have the following. The first little fraction has this for the denominator, t minus 1, and similar reason like earlier, on the top it will be a constant. And now we will add a second fraction, and notice that this is t squared. Some people will say, hey, that's quadratic. Well, in the partial fraction situation, you have to categorize what kind of quadratic you have. Sometimes a quadratic may have real roots, sometimes they don't. This quadratic has real root, right? Because this is the same as saying t times t. And t is equal to 0, it's a root for this. When people say irreducible quadratic, it's usually in the form of t squared plus another number, let's say a squared, right? So you cannot factor this anymore with real numbers, and you have to do a different setup for that. But anyway, let me erase this. Let me erase that. Now, here's the deal. It's possible for you to put down t squared right here. It is possible. Okay, it is possible to put down t squared right here. And if you do it this way, on the top, it will have to be one degree less than the bottom. And now this is t squared, so on the top it has to be t to the first power, right? And be sure you have all the terms, okay? So I will actually put down b t to the first power plus c, like that. Why? Because just in case, this right here is more complicated than just one. So in case uh, anything else happens, a, b, c in this case will take care of that, right? And now, when I tell people this, it's more you know, believable because this is one degree less than the bottom, so it's you know, more believable. And here's the magic. This stays the same, a over t minus 1, and we add. Look, on the top, we have two terms. On the bottom, we have one term. So we can split the fraction. So I can write this down as bt over t squared, and then plus c over t squared. And guess what? Right here, this and that cancel out, right? So we have t to the first power on the bottom. So in the end, we see that we have a over t minus 1 plus b over t plus c over t squared. <laughs> and that's exactly this form, isn't it? And this is why you have to build up the power. And keep in mind, t is equal to x plus 2. And then t minus 1 is x plus 1. So it's exactly this. Okay? It's exactly that. So if you didn't want to have the middle term, earlier you had to put this down. You will have to say a over x plus 1 plus x plus 2 squared. And on the top, it has to be another, you know, let's put on b x plus um, you know, gamma like this. But this is not beneficial in the sense of doing integration, okay? This is not the easiest form for integration purpose. And you can still find the beta and gamma. And the reason I use beta and gamma is because these are not different than, these are not the same as these two, right? And likewise, the a may also be different. But seriously, if you set this up like that, you have to remember the top has to be one degree less than the bottom. Well, you can also choose to do it this way by building out the powers. 
if you build out the powers, this is a linear factor, x plus 2. You build out the power, and you have x plus 2 to the first power first. And then the second one is x plus 2 to the second power. And right here, because this is linear, on top you have the constant, and they have to be the same kind. Why? We could take a look at this one more time, okay? And seriously, this right here will be the easiest setup when we have repeated linear factors. Thank <laughs> you.